episode number 13 coming for your ears. The Cutmaster cast is back, and today we are going to touch on um, some tips and tricks on creating a memorable client experience. Yeah, I like how we just dove into a bunch of different uh, elements, how we really elevate the whole experience for the couple from the planning meeting to the actual wedding day experience i feel like we gave a lot of good tidbits on how we do it as well as how it can be applied in other uh fields yeah i thought it was really good and then we get into the grab bag today um which is pretty fun um some more tiktoks for you all with one um lady in particular who's very excited to share her wedding hack with us she was very excited but you know it's a good tip so it was, it was good I'm, it. I'm stealing it do it it's, it's yeah. that good definitely and then we go back to the music um where tony and i share a few of our tracks that we play at our weddings that are kind of unexpected like maybe uh, not mainstream uh, tracks but stuff that we might throw in to uh, catch the dance floor off guard yeah but still work you know what i mean though they right. catch them off guard but they still hit really hard the same way as a popular song would so yeah i like the tracks that we picked mine i had such a good one that i forgot you know uh, what, year what, what, what year it came out uh, which you will <laughs> you've got to listen to see me totally um, just stumble over myself. Yeah, I mean it's fine. We we all there's so much music out there. You know, it's hard to remember what year every song came That's out. That's right. I, so I, I get it. I, I can't remember what year it is this year. So, right. um, but that that's fun. So hopefully you guys get some tracks to add to your playlist, and um, you get get a few takeaways from today's episode. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go. Yeah. What do you like better, Christmas or wedding season, Mr. Gray? Yes. Um, the answer would be um, wedding season. Bingo. Well, you've just inspired me to hire a DJ, so thank you. Oh, well, good luck finding a DJ who can move and shake like this. You are now listening to Cutmaster Cast. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> we ain't talking the toys. That's right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cutmaster Cast. We are the wedding industry podcast. My name is Chris Romero. My name is Tony Pacheco. What's up, y'all? Yeah, and we are DJs with Cutmaster Music out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thanks again for listening, everybody. And for all of you first-timers, welcome to the cast. And um, this is where uh, the podcast where we hit three areas in our show, including our weekly events, wedding industry topics, and music. And it's all based around the wedding industry. Oh, yeah. So uh, we're going to jump right into things, and let's get into our weekly events here. Um, I, once again, didn't have anything going on. Um, I'm going to be pretty boring for the next few weeks. When, <laughs> when we hit May, that's that's when my go. events take off and get going. But um, I know you, had a, you yes. had a wedding, right? I was at uh, La Fonda, so that was super awesome. Santa Fe. Yes, Santa Fe. I've been to, uh, um, I think we have maybe four or five bookings there, but David Stone really recommends us out there, and... They, and he pushes us yeah, pretty hard. He, he talked to me last weekend, and he was like, dude, you're booked already. And I was like, yeah, man, eight to ten months. Try to get him as soon to tell him to reach out as soon as possible because he was he was just he was annoyed that or not annoyed, but uh, right bummed. Yeah, bummed that we weren't there more often. But he was excited that we were there uh, last weekend. And it was a lot, a lot of fun. Long day. We started at four o'clock and we went until midnight. Oh, man. Didn't stop. The work day. One thing about like. I've noticed about like Mexican weddings is they stay true for their family. You know, they will, they'll sit there and just write it out the whole time. So was it a local, local couple? Um, they were, lo they were actually from uh, Houston or Dallas. One of the two Texas okay, cities, so Texas. Uh... Like they, I believe Alejandra, the bride was from here and the groom was from Texas. And that's usually how it goes. They want to showcase the city, the state and all of that. Um, but yeah, very, very dominant Spanish. Uh, I would say, I was telling you earlier, I played about three songs in English, maybe four, and it was all... The entire night. The entire night. Wow. Guapangos, Norteñas. What were the three English songs? Um, <laughs> what were they? They were like, All of Me, John Legend. Oh. That one did really well. Um, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Michael okay. Jackson. And a little MJ. And... Uh, what is it? Hotel room service, Pitbull. Okay. So, you know, that's still kind of the vibe. But they, they had a lot, a lot of fun. It was interesting, though, because for weddings, typically, older generations tend to party earlier in the evening, and then the younger crowd comes through at the end and finishes it out. Whereas, like this, I felt like we catered more towards the top 40 crowd, younger crowd, in the earlier part of the evening. 
And then it was like for the last hour, almost all wapangos or norteñas that more wap, more wapangos, more wapangos. That's what they kept. <laughs> and I was like, give me some because I, I, I just start Googling wapangos top. You know what I mean? Because oh, I, I just ran out. I had like four that that they had given me beforehand and all of that. But then I was you didn't think you weren't prepared for it to be that not as not, dominant. I, yeah, as right. I had a good amount of I will say I'm so happy I did the music prep beforehand because they gave me about 300 songs of like almost all Spanish. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to play all this. But I felt so much better having that ammo going in. Right. Because it wasn't as familiar as I thought I was going to be about, you know, because they had yeah. explained to me what they wanted. And I was I feel like we had a good understanding of what kind of party they got, but then when I got the music, it was like, okay, this is a little different. But it's honestly, my uh, my girlfriend had a very good point. She was like, you know, music, even though it's in a different language, you can beat match. It doesn't. It's yep. not going to be in a different language, right? So you right. can just make sure you know when certain how songs are structured with chorus and other lines and different things like that. Um, but yeah, they had a they had a lot of fun. We partied the entire night, five hours of open dance. Oh my goodness! Awful. <laughs> wow no you know it was fun and <laughs> that's what i say is like mexican families and i feel like i've noticed that is that they stay true they're like they're they are partiers and it's it's waves for sure but the dance floor was never empty oh that's cool yeah so it sounded like they had a good time like, and they had a lot out, of fun but, yeah um yeah. um this is what i love about weddings always you know they're all different right yes and i mean it, it, i don't know um i, I like i lo- love nightlife and i i did nightlife in my past life you know um but it was like I was always going there and I knew I was playing hip hop all night long or yeah. I was playing, you know, nothing but tropical Latin music all night long, which was fine. And, I, and you know, it actually probably made it a little bit easier. But that's what I love about weddings is that, you know, um, you you are typically playing to l- different generations, different generation gaps and ages. Um, and it can, you can go any which direction. So I never know which way I'm going to turn. Yeah. And that's one thing I, I, I will usually explain to our couples that are interviewing us. Cause they'll, they'll ask you, what's your style? And I'm like, well, I can play and do pretty much yeah. everything, but your event is going to dictate your, your specific dance floor and group and crowd is going to dictate the direction that we go and, and, and the direction that we take throughout the night. And that's the beauty of it. It's we're curating a playlist on on the spot that's unique and special to you all, yeah. you know? And that's that's really the big thing about what we do as DJs is the ability to read the room, right? right. You can prepare all day. That's the fun of it. Yeah, exactly. Really dropping those songs that you know it's going to work and you're like, okay, here we go. Let's right. throw this in there and get them going that way. But yeah, they they were just, just a bunch of partiers. And I what I loved about it is, yeah, it was fresh. It was different. It was not the same old songs that we're playing for weddings, but it was a lot more Spanish stuff. And... Um, it was challenging because there were times where I had to MC actually in Spanish. I didn't do much. I'm not bilingual by any means. But uh, like, for example, I would say, let's give it up for the newlyweds. And nobody knew what I was saying. And, but I would say. <laughs> and you were like. Uh... Right. You were like, Oh, all right. Usually you get a response after that. But OK. Right. Uh, but I would say, que viva los novios. And the crowd would go crazy. Right. Yeah. Same exact phrase. But they just didn't know what I was saying. So I would. So. So. Uh, w- what Tony's saying is, uh, Cutmaster Music is now um, hiring uh, his yeah. <laughs> bilingual DJs. Definitely, we, we're, we're hiring bilingual MC would be tight. I need to learn Spanish. That's that'd be a good. Oh, uh, you know what? I know someone. Um, yeah, I live with her, and yeah, she's a Spanish teacher. You oh, nice. You think after all this time, I had to learn something? Pick something up. Yeah. What the heck? Uh, does it? Do has, the boys speak has, Spanish? Has, no, not no. Yeah, yeah, you know what's funny? Like my wife's. My uh, mom is bilingual, and it just didn't stick with me. They tried, and it just. My 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 wife's sisters have been really good about raising their kids and talking nothing but Spanish around them, and they've got it. No, we're, not, it's nope. Good. Yeah, uh, they they know a few words here and there. Yeah. Um, Bad words. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, but it nah, it's uh, yeah, it's not happening in in the Romero household. Yeah. So. No, yeah, so we were at... We uh, barely can speak English. <laughs> yeah, so La Fonda last weekend, a lot, a lot of fun, and then I'm at uh, Four Seasons this weekend. Oh, nice. So one of the things I want to do um, now that we're getting into events here, mm-hmm. is talk about the people that we worked with. So who were some of the vendors that you... Uh, you worked with, I worked with Alicia Lucia, the team there. Ah, it was, um, it was a photographer. Yes, uh, the photographer team, but she has a good job at like having a bunch of photographers. Um, I, love, I love Alicia. It was... Awesome. 
Lauren, Lexi, and I want to say Cheyenne. That was her. That was her team. That was so there the, were four of them. Three of them. Oh, three of them. But they they are the only ones who do that. I think I've talked about it in the past. Uh, they do a good job at. Oh, having, but Alicia wasn't there. No. Okay, so it was her team. Got you. Got you. I have to say, I haven't shot. I haven't done a wedding with Alicia in a while, but I work with her and her team a lot. Yeah. Where I feel like I'm always with uh, Carissa or Lindsay. You know, like we're always kind of working at those different events. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. But yeah, I was with them. We were David Stone at David La Stone. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. They had a buddy, a friend of theirs, do the ceremony for the officiant. Okay. Uh, can't remember the name of the mariachi, but they were fantastic. All right. Food, La Fonda. I'm trying to think of any other vendors. The floral was really beautiful, and they were brought in from Houston. Wow. Yeah, she, I can't remember her name either. But she, you know, we 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 get there as they're setting up the florals, and I'm like, wow, great centerpieces. This looks great. And they were like, yeah, we're from Houston. They brought us out. So they were, Dang. yeah, that was cool. Um, cool. They brought a little home with them, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh, those, super cool. Those were the ones we worked with. But yeah, it was pretty much me and the photo team. But yeah, like I said, what I like about them is they have the two shooters, but then they also have a third helper, lead, kind of managing everything. Right. I feel like that helps them stay so organized. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. So, good weekend. Good start to uh, kicking off the wedding season here for yes, us. It is full swing for me. But All right. I've still got a few more weeks off to, uh, to think about whether I want to really do this with the rest of my, <laughs> my life. Okay. Okay. So, we're going to get into uh, the topic of the week. And um, actually, the, the, it, I think it's a pretty good segue here for what we're going to talk about, which is creating a memorable client experience. And we're going to share some tips on how to create a, mem- a memorable and enjoyable experience for clients, including, you know, just personalized touches, some creative ideas, you know, and attentive service. So I've got um, a, a few different areas that we're going to touch on here and just kind of talk through. And the first is personalization. Yep. So I want us to uh, chat about the importance of personalizing the wedding experience for our clients um, and how we offer ideas um, that can, you know, tailor our services to the unique needs and preferences of each wedding couple. So, you know, um, uh, let's talk about a few ways that we personalize events. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll start it off. Like one of the ways that we do it is just with our DJ booth. Yep. Um, you know, the, the DJ booth that we use now is, has a 60 inch screen on the front of it. And um, m- m- most of the time we usually put a monogram on there which typically has, you know, something like the bride and groom's name and maybe the event date or something like that. So I feel it's like really nice um, and just so much better than a boring six foot banquet table. Yeah. Right. Um, Or even a facade that's in front of your table Mm -hmm. or something like that. It's just kind of nice. It it, it brands the the event space and it just gives that unique personal touch. Yeah, it really does. We are doing a monogram for my couple this weekend. Mm -hmm. And what we actually did was we they sent me their save the dates and I took the save the date and I customized it because they wanted to theme it out right and really personalize it. So this you can see it here. We'll pull it up on the screen, but this is what their save the dates actually look like. Yeah. And then I had to oh dude, I gotta say AI is pretty cool these days. Uh huh. So what, what I did is I loaded up the image and then it gave me the fonts that were used. Oh. So I was like man. oh let's go you right so that's that's what uh, how I created that and I sent it to them and they loved it so. That's yeah, I agree. It's perfect. It's got cactuses. You'll see it on on YouTube if you're looking at watching our episode. But yeah, it's it's a really cool color scheme, and that kind of touches on it too. Uh, how we talk about the colors, and but really making it unique. You know, and and I had that on here too. You know, implementing the color scheme into our our lighting and atmosphere. Yeah. So our lightscaping, right? Yeah. Um, you know, if they've got some kind of like that, you know, that picture that you have there um, is showing like some more natural tones and and things like that. Then I, you know, I would I would probably try to incorporate that you know into the uplighting as well where you can have like a nice amber tone up against the walls and soften the walls if it's if they're white or dark or something like that so um i think that's another way for us to be able to personalize the event space we you know, did from uh, the dj side of things. exactly we did uh, a couple who their wedding was a lot of more like deeper blues and things like mm-hmm. that and we did alternating blues and purples around yeah. the room right and so that i'm a big Big, big fan of uplighting because I always say it transforms this space. It, you walk into any ballroom, but you uplight it, you're going to be like, wow. And it, and it really helps theme it out and, like you said, personalize it. Right. And I think another way for us as, as DJs to personalize an event gets to the heart of what we do, which is the music. So I will always recommend to our couples or tell them, like, you know, I think that the cocktail hour and dinner music are perfect points in the night for them to 
put their stamp on the event. You know, if they've got some eclectic taste in music or have some songs that they really enjoy that maybe we wouldn't play typically like on a dance floor during open dancing or it's not exactly. mainstream or something like that, throw it into your cocktail hour and into your um, in, into your uh, dinner portions of the music. And, and it just, once again, allows you to say that to your guests like hey you're at this event and um this is this is us right mm-hmm. this is our event and this is the un- part of the unique experience that they're getting but this is us the couple this is this is who we are right yeah definitely and what i like too about like separating playlists for like different sections is you can really theme out certain sections of the evening right. or like cocktail hour i'm a big fan when we are in santa fe playing spanish guitar during the ca- the the no, no real words, low lyrics, you know, right. if any. And then you're just playing something really light to set the mood to kind of help feel the moment, right? But what I love, too, is when you when you have your guests walking in for the first time and you open with uh, Ain't That a Kick in the Head, Dean Martin, right? That's such an iconic wedding vibe song. Right. And you feel it immediately. Uh, but that's why I like, like love songs or more lyrically things during dinner because people can sing along and it's just – different of a feel but yeah you can really change whole environment just by the playing of certain music totally so the next uh the next one i've got here actually just really blends in with this and i think adds to the personalization aspect of things and that's you know just bringing creative ideas for weddings you know sharing as a vendors um sharing your unique and creative ideas to incorporate into your services so for example maybe customized cocktails you know um, interactive entertainment and personalized wedding favors um you know just finding ways to incorporate new and unique ideas that fit with the couple's vision i yeah. think um you know is is something that you know helps create and add to that um memorable client experience yeah exactly for a like, great example was this weekend after the pretty much the event towards the like last hour or so they put out snacks right and it was uh like a mexican wedding cookie and uh like these, they had chips, but all of these chips were from Mexico. You could tell, like by the the branding of the bags and all of that. Like and, to eat, like eating, like, yes, like okay, a, gotcha. after after the event snack. Chips and salsa, exactly right. Yeah. But it was like Doritos, Lay's, but they looked like they were from Mexico, right? And mm. like everything looked like it was from Mexico on the dessert plate or yeah. after snacks. And that's a great way to make it unique, but very much was catered to them. Totally. Cool. And that I mean that kind of segues into number three, which is. You know, I'm um, paying attention to the, the details, right? Yeah. So, like, the littlest details, things like that, right? Yeah. Like, add, totally add to the experience. So, um, emphasizing the importance, you know, uh, of the smallest details. Um, so, things like that, or, like, the quality of the linens, you yes. know, um, to the way the place settings are arranged. Um, just creating um, an, unfor- an unforgettable experience, you know, for, for your guests and clients, um, you know, I think on our end, where you put the DJ. Yes. I think that's a little detail, um, but really it's it's really big for us, you know, in the way that um, for functionality, right? So yeah. a lot of people will just say, oh, just put the DJ in the corner. Well, then when it comes to your open dancing and you can't really hear the music because the, the speakers aren't on the dance floor yeah. or the dance floor lighting is over in the corner and something you didn't really think about. And instead you put this massive giant head table on the dance floor and now you've got wasted space right yeah. like number nobody's one sitting there there's nobody that's sitting there they during leave once it's done yeah and then you also just don't think that well what is the function of that well we're just going to watch you eat yeah <laughs> right yeah. i mean and i get it so i think you know function versus um the why yeah so i think they want the attention on them right so that's why we're going to put us at the front of the room raised up above everybody and they're going to see us. Yeah. And well, what are we going to see you do? Eat. We're going to watch you eat. And yeah. then we're not going to watch you at all because you're going to be on the dance floor. And now we're just going to be looking at the tables just space. there. Yeah. And where's the DJ? Shouldn't he be here on the dance floor? You know, like, yeah. So I think, um, you know, paying attention to little details and things like that is, um, you know, can, can be huge. Yeah. It really can make or break your event. I feel like just where you place your DJ and, um, just all of those little things that you want to make sure uh, are taken care of. We, I feel like, too, a lot of things that we do on the planning end or on just, like, the overall execution of the day, we think about those uh, little details to help personalize it, but also help the day just run smooth, too. You know? Ceremony. 
Yeah. You know, the ceremony for us is is a pretty big deal. Actually, it's easy. That, my highest stress point. That it, No it's doubt. Pretty close. Or grand intro and cere- ceremony and then grand intro. But I'm nervous. I'm not nervous, but I'm locked in. So here's a few things, and this gets into details with the ceremony, that most people don't think about. Um, microphones. I think just a lot yeah. of people just feel like, oh, microphones always work. You know, and no matter what, um, you know... Like, can we have a lapel and, um, you know, and, and, and that things are just going to work out. And I hate lapels. I hate them. I don't ever use them if I don't have to. And I usually recommend um, my favorites are a journeyman, which is kind of like if you think of the Britney Spears microphone that just mm-hmm. comes up against your face yeah. um, or a handheld. Um, you know, and I know that a lot of couples don't like the look of the handheld, but. Once again, functionality. Well, what's most important to you? You people hearing you, um, less chance of dropouts and cutouts. Yep. Um, and and I just you know lapels are the worst because any little movement, any little wind, mm. um, you know. And then if they're not really close to the mouth, I mean, ideally, you guys like to, like these microphones here. Like you're watching us on on YouTube. We're basically eating the microphone. If I get way back here, like this is my car. Yeah. This is like a foot away. And you can noticeably not hear me, mm-hmm. you know, not, and this is the way it is with the regular microphones that we use as well, too. So like when you're doing your toast, I always tell our, you know, anybody that prep, I give them a little prep and say yeah. and tell them, eat the microphone. Mm-hmm. You know, it needs to be close to your mic. And no doubt, what do they end up doing? They put it way down here. They just why. stand there with they're like <laughs> holding the mic. They're not even like emceeing or like I, I get it. It's yeah. not, they don't know how to emcee. They, they don't know. But that, that, it's the worst when they're like just standing there with the mic, then, like resting then, on their belly. And everybody's telling them, "We can't hear you. Yeah. We can't hear you. Can you turn it?" And they're asking us to turn it yeah. up. And it's like, no, we can't turn it up. You want some crazy you feedback? Want, you're gonna get yeah. You're increasing feedback. So. I found it to be uh, the most successful is to prep the toaster. I will do that every single time. Um, I will let them know, hey, toasts are going to be happening here in about 15 minutes. If you need to use the restroom, go get your speed from your room. That's happened, right? Different things like that. But I also say be sure to keep the mic up. Try to refrain from holding it down or waving it around because no one's going to hear you. So just be sure to remember to keep that mic up, um, and we should be good. Right? Yeah, so. I think that's a, a myth that most people just think that all microphones work no matter where you place yep. them, and, and, and all microphones are high quality. And, yeah, it's um, – and that's re- why it's the biggest stress point for me. Yeah. Honestly, it's microphones and wireless technology, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it's tricky. It is tricky, but, and that's where, uh, where it gets tough because, you know, when those things do fault out or stop working or have issues, everybody immediately looks and turns at you. Right. And you're like, I don't know, you know, or I mean, so I'll know, but like there'll be a time, like maybe the mic will drop for some reason and I'll be like, it, there's no signal right uh, there. I had it. It worked. Interference, well, whatever. It, it, actually, it, it did happen this weekend where we did the line. We did the test. It was clear. It was great. I had a solid sound. And then there was maybe 50 guests in yeah. front of the microphone box and then her. And so her, uh, the lapel, the lav just went out. And I, we, I always have two mics as a backup. And so I had the other hand mic right there behind him. I had already talked to her about it. If this one doesn't work, we've got that backup right there. Pull it out immediately. And sure enough, she did it, and the handheld worked smooth, and it was really, really great. But like that, that's I was like, that's why we have backups. You just never know what's what, what's yeah. going to happen. Right. But even like too about the details, a lot of couples don't think about how the mic is going to be passed around for readings, for uh, poems, or things like that. Right. And so it's super smart to just think about all of those little details because it can be awkward where they're up there and they're like, you know, you know, like yeah. so think about absolutely. Those. Okay, the next one for me is uh, communication. So, um, you know, just maintaining clear and consistent communication with um, with our clients throughout the whole entire wedding process, um, you know, including, like, just basic things, like like responding to uh, questions and, yeah. and your clients promptly um, and just giving up regular updates, you know, throughout the actual process of planning a wedding. So I think one of the most uh, unexpected things that, clients talk about in our reviews we I, I see this fairly regularly and i don't think about it a whole lot because it just seems normal to me but you know is is the ability for us to communicate and respond quickly to their questions and yeah. concerns just like our overall planning process right like we have that locked in for sure yeah you know so i think that's something that we take for granted but is really important you know it just um really puts uh puts them at ease when we're you're able to be in touch you Get know, them an answer to them quickly. in a prompt, 
in a you know fair amount of time. You know what I mean? Got a little bug here. <laughs> in case anybody. Yeah, when you're watching on YouTube, um, I've got bugs flying on our. Uh, uh, it's all good. Fish. No, yeah. Um. Anyway, okay. Whew. Yeah, communicating communicating with the couples. I feel like it's funny that you say that. Yeah, it's it's very straightforward. We just are pretty much there for them whenever they need. But I don't know. I've never had a bride that or a groom that's so demanding. I'm like, oh my god, leave me alone. You know, I've never had that. It's always pretty casual questions. Oh, yeah. And they don't. They're not. I don't know. There's no. We're we're always the fun part of the planning, I feel like. And so when people have questions for us or need certain answers, it's very casual and it's very easy for us to answer those things. It's just basic, like, honestly, responding within – I try to respond immediately. Like yeah. when an email comes through, mm-hmm. like I am very good at being on top of that stuff. And it's more so because of me. I know I'll yeah, forget. That's true. If, if I, In fact, I don't even open an email, either that or if I open Same it, way. I mark it as unread. So that I can go back and see it. Like maybe, I don't know, I, I it's something I need to answer in the office in an hour. Okay. I'll make sure it's marked as unread because it, the minute, you know how it is. And I, I, I know some of you can r- relate. You know, you mark it as read and then you forget about it yep. and you never answer. And then they're coming back a week later. Hey, did you get my email? And I'm like, oh my God, you dummy. Yep. Yeah, so I don't, you know, I try to respond immediately. Definitely. Okay. Moving on to the next one, um, I think you know to to add to the to the wedding experience, you know, client surprises. So um, let's talk about how you know wedding vendors, you know, can surprise and uh, you know your clients with going above and beyond expectations. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big deal. Yeah, we always try to give added value in some way, shape, or form. This could be an extra up lighting. Maybe I, you know, we were listening to them, and oh, so here's actually a good example of this. We did a wedding a few years back, um, and it was actually on TLC's um, wedding show nice. um, called uh, Four Weddings. Four weddings. Like yep. Yeah. It was on TLC's Four Weddings. We were on TV. It was awesome. Great experience. I could do a whole nother podcast on that show alone. But the bride and groom were super into snowboarding. Nice. All right. That's actually how they, I, I believe, how they met. Everything around this whole wedding was based around snowboarding. Okay. And this was a, their wedding was in December, and that year, there was it was a very warm year. There was like no snow, and she really wanted it to snow on her wedding day. Yeah. And so I was just like, "Let's make it snow on the dance floor." Yeah. And they looked at me like, "What?" And I had personally at that time had never done it, but I knew we could do it. Yeah. And I knew I had friends in the industry that had done the whole snow on the dance floor during a first dance effect and that sort of thing. So contacted a buddy of mine who actually did um all the effects for the Harry Potter. Out in, nice. in Universal Studios, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm made like, it snow over there. Yeah, and I'm cool. like, hey, Chris, uh, his name's Chris to you. I'm like, I need to make it snow on the dance floor. And he's like, I got you. He sends me this machine, yeah. and they've made this special, um, you know, a fluid basically where the snow melts. It's not, it's not even real snow. It's kind of like soap bubbles, but it, it gives the effect of snow, and it dissipates right before, before it even go. hits the floor. Yep. And we did this effect, and it was so good. And it shows so well on film and on on in in photography that I went out and bought a machine like immediately. Nice, yeah. And so now we use that as our snow, you know, our our um, um you know, like the snow machine. Yeah, we, it's a snow machine, and as an add on. But if I if you know that if I just know like okay they this is something that I think would will, will enhance this event. We do it as an add on, but sometimes I'll I'll just kick it in right yeah. and just do it. Like I think unexpected surprises like that just going over over the top above and beyond right yeah really Finding trying little to, things mm-hmm, really trying to make sure that they know that you really are for them having a fantastic day whatever that looks like i think we've done a good job at like our overall pricing model now where we create an experience we're not nickel and diming on certain things yeah and that's what kind of, it. what what separates us i think and what yeah. makes us a little bit different from most of the guys even just in the industry as a whole, much less Albuquerque. Um, I think a lot of people are going to, they're going to line item you and that's fine. I get it. That's the standard model, right? You yeah. want the, you, you want one microphone, it's $50. You want two, an extra, whatever. Um, for me, I like, yeah, I, I like to listen to our couples, hear what they're wanting to do, what they want to accomplish. What are your hopes and dreams? What does the vision look like? And yeah. then let's do it. Let's make it happen. You want snow? Let's make it snow. Exactly. You know, you want EDM, uh, an EDM show? 
right? Let's bust out the lasers and and cannons, and, right? And, right. Like, and I know you had one last year. That, yeah. that was like a big thing. They wanted an EDM they wanted Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so we we pretty much brought Vegas to Hayatama. Yeah, that was cool. Right. So, yeah, um, I think you know uh, that that wraps up the the client surprises. The mm. next one is, um, you know, this. <laughs> There's kind of a theme here as I'm going through this with personalization, getting creative. This one's customization. So, you know, customizing the wedding experience for your clients. And this is more so based on maybe like cultural background. Yeah. Their values, um, preferences, uh, you know, incorporating specific traditions or cuisines or things like that. You know, I think there's many ways that we as a DJ company can do this. Maybe you incorporate their culture into your photo booth layout, right? We, we've got photo booths and you can incorporate it there. Um, the music, especially for us. Once again, going back to the cocktail hour, um, I just had a couple recently that um, he his side of the family is from India um, and hers is from here, from New Mexico, right? Yeah. And so they don't want like a ton of, of the Indian music, but they want some. And I'm like... I told them cocktail hour. Let's throw in some Bollywood tracks. Yeah, that's like, the time. That'd be awesome, right? Um, yeah. So just finding ways to to customize events based on, you know, your your things like we can control background. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel you. Yeah, like based on what your experience and things you've seen work and seen like you know, we've done this before. We played Bollywood during cocktail and it hit. You know. So. Yeah. Well, and and and, and then them know. you know creating a playlist if if he's Indian and she's like from New Mexico like. Put in some New Mexico jams. Right, kind know, of mix it up. Mix it, and, mix it up. Yeah, because that's a unique playlist. You're not going to sit somewhere right. and hear Bollywood and Rancheras back to back or something. You know, exactly. but but it would it would be very appropriate at a wedding, and it would f- just feel right. Totally. Yeah. So that's cool. All right. The next one I've got here is anticipation. All right. So, um, you know, the importance of anticipating the needs of your clients and being proactive in addressing any potential issues or concerns that might might come up so an example might be like you know um when we get to the final event review and maybe the couple has planned to do la marcha and 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 you see the your uh your timeline right and you see on there la marcha and then we're going to do the dollar dance well this is where our experience might come into play and we might suggest actually flip-flopping that right yep and saying okay well Let's think about the why here. You know, if you do La Marcha, we're bringing everybody out onto the dance floor and then it ends with you dancing in a circle. And then if you do the dollar dance, we're going to clear the dance floor and we're going to have, you know, 15, 20 minutes of individual people dancing with you. And then we're going to have an empty dance floor to open up our open dancing. So we might suggest flip flopping that. Do your dollar dance. You know, um, people at by that point are going to want to get out on the dance floor. Then you go into La Marcha, you bring them all out. And then we finish La Marcha with a, a full pack dance floor and we go right into our open dancing, right? Yep. So anticipating the needs of your clients and what they're looking to do, um, that's just one example that I can think of of how we would do that. Yeah, right. I think it's just letting them know past experiences and knowing like you're going to need this or like. Or you want to do this. This is what it's going to take for us to get right? there. To yeah. Get to that point. Or right? like a, like a like a exit. Right. Like the idea of wanting to do a faux exit. We've talked about that. Right. Right. And you're like, well, that could work. But then you break it down for them and help them understand. Like, And to anticipate people are going to leave. Yes, exactly. You are giving them the idea and the vision of the night ending, even though you don't want it to. But you need this picture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we've I know we've we've ranted about that. Yeah, we have. We're trying to do it just for the picture. Well, you're putting the idea of leaving in their head. Mm-hmm. And guess what? You're going to have some that are going to leave. Yeah. Or like there's also too like um, like certain venues really call for going from grand intro directly into the first dance. Mm-hmm. Some of them don't just because of the way they're laid out. Sure. But like La Fonda. I know I keep talking about it, but it's grand intro can go directly into the open dance. Yeah. And it can work out really smooth. And so anticipating like – if they're like, well, we don't, we want to, we want to party, we want to dance. Hearing those keywords and understanding, okay, you guys aren't really looking for a formality heavy wedding day that's traditional, but you're more so looking to streamline it and get to the party. So why don't we do the first dance right after the grand intro? So that knocks out a formality, and we only have to do two more after, right? It's like right. anticipating and understanding what those those things look like. They give you an idea, and then you're like, okay, well. That can work, but what if we did it this way so you can actually so it can it can work out better? Because they 
they see it on TikTok, right, or whatever, and right. it's great. You hear about all this stuff. This worked out great. In fact, we're going to listen to a TikTok a little nice. bit later on in yeah. the grab bag where I, it's going to touch exactly on this, where this all sounds great. Let us tell you how this is going to yeah. really yep. pan out. <laughs> like, okay, that's cool on paper, but logistically, how does that work? Right. And so, yeah. Yep. Having them understand all of, like, really breaking it down, because I, I'll, I often get like, oh, I didn't think that. You know, that happens a lot with the music, too. Um, and I, I feel like this is more so with a, a couple. I, I, this has happened many times. They've got this vision, right? Um, okay, for my dance with my father, we're going to do these five songs. And we're going to go from the yeah. Mambo number five into the Cupid Shuffle, into the Blot. And, and they're trying to think of this cutesy thing because you just said it. They see all this on social media, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, we went for, into these five different things. We're going to go from a slow dance to this, to that, to the and hop all over the place. Yeah. And then I map it out for them. I'm like, okay, so we're going to sit there and watch you dance for eight minutes. Yeah. And they're like, huh. And I'm like, and I'm like, just letting you know with your dad, who you never dance with, it's already awkward. About a minute, minute and a half, it starts to feel yeah. a little weird. That's it. Yeah. You want to do this for eight minutes with all these songs that you want to put in, even mm. with us chopping it up. Like, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, if they really are adamant about it, I like making wedding days unique. So when like things like that come up to play, I'm always really about it. But I, I understand. I've totally. Had, I've had it where it's too much. Yeah, and, and you know so, I mean? and that's kind of what I'm so saying like, here. So anticipate, figure out how do we, we can do that, but let's chop it up. A exactly. Little. Let's chop this down. Yeah. I think the ideal time is r roughly around the three minute mark. And let's cut this down to where we get this done within that amount of time. So we can still keep the attention of your, yeah, of your guests exactly. here. And see after that too, then that maybe they're like, oh, okay, I'm down for a minute and a half. Maybe we only need two songs. Right. You know what I mean? They, they kind of reframe their expectations. And so exactly. you, you really help them understand. Okay, so the next one here I have is create a lasting impression. You know, um, share different strategies, um, you know, to your clients, such as, you know, following up after the wedding with a thoughtful thank you note or yeah. offering discounts on, I, w I don't know if I'd do this, but th this came across as offering discounts on future services. So something that we're doing, you know, to try to yeah, keep, to keep like the, right, to keep the, keep us in mind after the wedding. Cause I think for a lot of us wedding vendors, we think of doing their wedding and then we never see that client ever again, right? Mm. And we don't think about after the wedding. Yeah. And so really the only vendor that I can think of that maybe gets that opportunity is more so the photographers and videographers because yeah. you're delivering your product after the wedding, mm. right? Um, something that we are doing, I just install, instilled, uh, we're calling it the house party program. And see, I do realtor, uh, realty, right? So I'm a realtor during the day, DJ by night. Love it. <laughs> And so I was trying to think of a way to num not only mesh these two worlds together, but what's something that we could do as DJs to kind of, you know, keep, keep in touch and in flow with our clients after the wedding. So I, I'm doing this program now where, OK, you, you, you've you've just got married. And maybe for those of you that are looking to get a house together, your first home together, um, we're doing this uh house party program where I'm giving you, uh, you know, 500 towards closing costs. If you use me as your realtor. Um, and then you also get, a, a you know, a DJ for your housewarming party yeah. you know, for a few hours. So have everybody over to your home. We'll take a couple of speakers in there and, and keep the, the party going, you know, um, after the wedding day, yeah, which definitely. I think would be super fun and cool. And I've had a lot of people that have reached out to me in the past about this. Like, nice. okay. how can we, we, we need to book you guys, you know, to come over. And we've done some yeah. house parties for, yeah. for people, just, you know, backyard pool parties during the summer or whatever, right? Yeah. You know, so um, that's, you know, uh, just something that we are doing now and, you know, I'll challenge you, some of you other vendors out there to think of ways to keep uh, keep it going after the wedding. You yeah, know? I would say a good way to kind of keep that connection is social media as well. Having right. them follow you and still being there. And because I have a lot of my clients who were past clients who are still looking at my content. because You can see who's viewing your stories or who's liking your stuff. Right. And I'll be <laughs> like, oh, there's Michael from two years ago. Right. But, you know, they it's cool because then sometimes I'll see uh, a bride or groom from the past out while I'm DJing nightlife. And they'll be like, ah, well, he was our DJ, you All know? Right. And that's those are those impressions that you want because in the future when they think of um, a buddy of them, hey, you, who was that DJ at your wedding? Oh, DJ Zia, he was the guy, right? Like they connect it immediately because you put that impression in their head from doing um, all of these things we've been talking about, right? 
um, being there for them, communication, all of the extra things, but just also just trying to like help them re- remember that you're you're awesome at what you do, and you can really help that give that product to a lot of different people. Right. And the last one I've got here to wrap this up is just you know continually improving. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think it's really important to emphasize um, just constantly striving to improve the client experience by seeking feedback, you know, getting evaluations, you know, from your services, implementing changes based on client input. You know, I think that's super important to always be keeping a pulse on, you know, um, how your services affect your clients. I think sometimes you get into, uh, it's easy for us to just keep doing what we're doing, right? The rotation of the machine or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just, um, you know, and then time flies as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a good idea to always be keeping a pulse. Um, we ask for, you know, feedback after every event. Um, and we just want to make sure that the things that we're doing, the things that we're implementing are actually contributing to the client experience. Um, because things change over time. You know, I know a lot like the client experience now with TikTok, with Instagram, um, is just so different than it was 10 years ago. Yeah. And if you're still doing the things that you were doing 10 years ago and think it's okay, and in, in many cases it might it might be getting you by, but if I just think if you're not doing things differently than you were 10, 15 years ago, then, you know, you're you're missing out You if you haven't missed the bus already. Yeah. Well, for me, um, I've been doing it eight years, and even just five years ago, I feel like the level of communication has very much changed. Like it's so appropriate to send a text to a bride. Yeah. And I feel like five years ago I was calling them, laying out meetings, and we would have specific moments to talk to these couples. But now a bride can shoot me a text, and I'm like, sure, what do you need? Like it's it's very casual, and that absolutely like that wasn't a thing five years ago. No, in fact, it was like uh, you, you were looked down upon in that yeah, industry. It was like, unprofessional. It was unprofessional. Do not text your client. You uh-huh. Don't text. You ne- always need to call and yeah, formal emails. No, or and, whatever. That, and yeah. now it's uh, now we we've evolved to where you know communicate with a client the way they want to be communicated with, yeah. which in most cases is on direct messages. Yep. Uh, you know, <laughs> through text, text message or yeah. yeah, right, just DMs or whatever. DMs. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how it'll go for the next five years because yeah, there's that's a big thing. Millennials don't like human interaction or whatever right. they like socials or whatever yep. and so yeah um i i'm fault i love to text texting is way easier than a phone call but honestly you're going to get your answer with a phone call right away so i get it right no you just it's just different i you don't know, know what it, weird adapt or die that's the yeah way, that's the way i see it that's really how it is you know and we're learning uh how to adapt especially with these new ai with things. ai now i'm telling you guys if you're not you know um keeping up with ai or at least trying to learn it and see the different things I saw something the other day. There's different, ten, like, uh, there was a top 10 list of 10 different AI apps um, to use. And they did so many different things from generating um, images to um, voice, mm-hmm. um, uh, creating code for website development and things like that. So I've seen one that you can give them a script and it'll give you a person talking. Like, it'll get, like, you could just have them writing out the, the pod, right? You'd write a pod yeah. and then it would just be them talking to. And it would be an AI generated image or video of them chatting about it. It's crazy. Yep. You got to stay on top of it. Yeah. So um, hopefully you guys got some takeaways there and yeah. just, you know, creating a memorable client experience and then, you know, evolving with the client experience. So, um, you know, I want to chat a little bit about that today. Yeah, it's a good one. Hopefully you got some stuff out of that. So now we're going to move on. Oh, it's yeah. Time. It's time. You already know. know it. It's time. Our favorite time. Ooh, it's grab called bag tunes. Grab Bag. Yeah, love it. <laughs> Pretty good. So dumb. I love it. I love it. We're, um, we're, we're fun, dumb. All right. Okay, so uh, we've got a few different. We got. Uh, I know you've got one here. Uh, yeah. Why don't we then, do the TikTok? I've got my Facebook post and then the other TikTok. Okay, so we're gonna go TikTok, Facebook post, TikTok. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So this first one is a wedding tip. Um, I don't know if this. Your planner. If she's a planner or what? But. Ride. She's got a tip here, so uh, let's check it out and see what we got. I'm going to share with you guys one thing that I did in preparation for my wedding day that I honestly feel is the best thing that I did that led to me not being stressed. Everybody kept asking me, why are you so calm? How are you so calm? And honestly, I feel it's because I did this. So let me show you. 
So I created a sign up sheet and the morning of when me and my bridesmaids were all getting ready for the wedding, we passed around the sign up sheet and we each took one to two items and just wrote our names down and this was our task for the day. Um, my amazing bridesmaids were more than happy to help and so you do need to have really amazing bridesmaids. I called it my please help me list and I cannot rave about how much has alleviated stress for me because I knew it was going to be handled. I knew the lunch catering was going to be all set up. One of the girls made sure that everybody had their bouquets. One of the girls made sure that the groomsmen were ready 15 minutes before the photographer arrived, made sure that the flower girl and ring bearers were all ready. I just had a bunch of things, but it was really, really hot. I'm going to... Okay. Abruptly, but I get it. Yeah, yeah it kind of stopped. Good. Okay, so basically, um, this lady asked... Uh, her bridesmaids who were so willing and wanting to help so her and so great to take on all these tasks. That right there is why you get a wedding planner. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's exactly, if you don't have one, I think it's smart to make checklists and really have that. But if you want your wedding party to like relax just as much as you and enjoy right. themselves, right? Like, I guess if you wanted to have a wedding and like, I get it. A wedding party is there to support the bride and groom and you could look at it that way. I would so. love to interview the wedding party. Yeah. Right. Let me go interview the wedding party secretly, anonymously without her knowing who this is. And let me just see how wonderful this was for them to take on um, being there for, you know, I'm, that task list. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, we can put this up on. Yeah, I was, I was uh, listening to it, and I was like... On YouTube. So she's got here, like, like... everything a planner would 11 do. 11.45, set up lunch catering. Um, it, it's kind of hard to see behind her here. Uh, make sure all the blah, 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 the yeah. photographer arrives at... Yeah, who wants to be in charge of all this? Your wedding party does not want to be in charge of stuff. Yeah. Like... That's where it gets tough. I mean, I've been a part of... I've been on both sides. Get a planner. Get a planner. Get a planner, people. I am all... I'm in favor of planners for... Even if it's just a events. day of. Like, I think having a day of planner is so nice because they just manage it. You, you know, know what, though? So, but I'll, t I'll, I'll say this because I hear this from our, our planners all the time. There's yeah. no such thing as a day of planner. Well, you they cannot... do month of, right? Like... Well, but I, so what I'm saying is, is like for them to really do their job properly, yeah. they're not just showing up like the day of and taking on all the tasks. No, no, not by any you know, means. They're... But I, they, they, they're only contracted to work that one day, I guess. I don't know right. what that would look like. Because, you, like you said, there's prep work in it. There's pre there's prep right. work, right? So we're not day of DJs. Yeah, exactly. I no. mean, it might seem like, oh, we just show up on the day of the wedding. And, no, right. And, and no, we do all kinds of prep work right. and that, and having meetings. I'd and say stuff. it's about like a nine-month experience from the sales to the booking. Because typically we book about 10 months out, a year out. And then I'll meet with them four or five months out. And then probably a month out, and then the week of. Right. That way you can. I like to lay the groundwork, and then because always they they don't know any of the answers I ask them for the first wedding. It very much happens, and so uh, you let them. Okay, I still need this. I still need this. I still need this. But you guys got some time, so no worries. And then a month you check in, and they're like, "Oh, we still need to get that right." Okay, well you got another month. Like it's fine. And then week of, lock in these decisions because. You know, I had, they were, uh, my couple last week, they were like, yeah, we don't know if we want to do that or not. And I was like, decide right now because it's, it's, it's make or break now. Because if it's, you don't want to be thinking about these things. Oh, we still have to make that decision. Oh, we still, like two days before your wedding day. Right. I always like to, let's just lock all that in. Then you can focus on something else. I think it's important for our couples to, <laughs> it's. There's nothing more stressful than a wedding, peeps. I mean, that's all there is to it. And so uh, you need to do, I feel like, and it's worth it to do everything you can to make that experience and that day as least, as less stressful as you possibly can. Wedding planners just help out so much with that. A value. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, give us yours. Nice. Okay. So this comes from a Facebook group that I'm a part of, Wedding and Event DJ Entertainers, in quotation, DJs only. That's the name of the group. But anyway. This is a rant from a guy, and it's kind of funny, but I think it's kind of it's on point with us. So it says, is it just me, or does it drive anyone else nuts when your bride and groom inform you that their photographer built their timeline for them? I don't just mean from hair and makeup to reception. Well, excuse me. I don't just mean from hair and makeup to reception start. I mean the whole day timeline. Of course, it's always the photographers. It's always to the photographer's advantage, which I find amusing since the most photographers don't even stay till the end of the reception. 
once the reception starts, who's driving things. I think it's the DJ in most cases who coordinates the intros, the cake cutting, featured dances, etc. That's all. Carry on. So I thought it was interesting how, like, very strong this guy was about a photographer timeline and, like, not willing to work. Well, like, we talk about it a lot. It's a teamwork thing. You know what I mean? And I will... I'll type up a timeline, I'll think of something, but then I'll send it to the photographer and then we'll collaborate and figure out, uh, oh, okay, well, I have 7.30 for the, the sunset photo. Well, you had 7.15. You want to do something in the middle? You want to just see how it feels day of, right? Like collaborating with them. And I thought this was such a unique take because it was like, okay, yes, the photographer isn't there, but like they have to be aware of all of these things. So when a photographer does give a timeline, I don't see it as a reason to be offended, right? Like this guy's like mad. And I was right. And I just feel like you need to collaborate more versus like get upset at it. I feel like they're doing you a favor in a way. Yeah, no, and I think um, once again, this is just a communication thing. Yeah. So, you know, um, communicate. Uh, realize we should all be on team bride and groom. Um, you know, uh, this is why I like to have my final event reviews the week of the wedding because yeah, usually typically that's... by that time they've talked with any planners, photographers, all of that stuff that it's all finalized. It, yeah, and it's all finalized and then we can just chat and discuss and I can be on the same page as you and and everybody else too. Yeah. So, um and then usually I'll print out an extra timeline of, of mine to give to the photographer exactly. um day of and then we can just work around things cuz yeah, they might look at some oh. stuff and on there and be like, "Hey, can we do this or do that?" And then most of the time, it's yeah, it's just like, "Ah, oh, yeah, sure, like that works fine," yeah, you know. Right. And and I always feel like I always ask, "What time are you here till?" Oh, I'm here till nine. Okay, cool. Then we'll make sure to get everything done. I have right. I have nine thirty for Bokeh Garter, but I'm gonna do it at eight forty five. Missed that shot. Yep. So just good communication yeah. is key. Okay, last one here. This is another TikTok. Um, and this. This girl is very excited to uh, tell us her wedding hack. Nice. I heard the best wedding reception hack ever, and I just need to share it with you. But before I do, make sure to like and follow for wedding tips and ideas for of 2022. Of course. course. So I was talking to one of my coworkers who got married last November. I asked her how much her and her groom were actually together during the reception, because that's something I'm worried about. I know I'm going to be dancing all night long, but I also want my partner to be with me too. And I know he loves dancing, but I could easily see him hanging out with his friends or going to get drinks to the bar. And I just want to know how to spend time with him. So this is the best hack to do so. She said that they made their entire reception playlist and they picked two to three songs. If those songs played, they knew they had to immediately drop whatever it is they were doing and find each other on the dance floor. Nice. I'm freaking obsessed. Comment below your thoughts. She is freaking obsessed with this. A great idea. I love cannot it. wait for her three songs. Actually, I thought it was cool too. Yeah, I like that idea. So um, genius. I the only thing I would say to add to that is to make sure your DJ knows what those three songs are. Oh yeah, you know because if you just play them, yeah, or, willy or, nilly, or like let's just say like you this past weekend got a list of three hundred songs. Yeah. We know we're not playing three hundred songs in any given night. Like there's no way. So I, I just want to make sure um, that I know those three songs, and then we might even just just, just discuss like um, spacing them out appropriately. Yeah. You know? Or you know, she might when to play them. She might yeah just or she might say you know what wait to play these three songs till later in the night. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I just had a heads up as to that's what those songs were, or the kind of like oh, yeah. okay, let's make sure we're on the dance floor, then um, it, it's just good information for me. Yeah. To, well, as a DJ, you could even. Just pay attention to it, right? Right. Groom and groom and bride are on the dance floor. Drop that banger. Or they're right? not. Or I see the groom. Or if they're not. Or yeah. I see the groom's been over at the bar for yeah. the last five songs. Yeah. Okay. Now I I, I Good let me get them because I know if my bride and groom are on the dance floor, everybody oh, yeah. like everybody's gonna be there. It's gonna be packed. So that might be a cue to me. Okay. The uh, yeah, they've been outside yeah. if for you a have while. Like a dud, or if you need a transition yep. in music, or okay, here we go. This will get everybody yeah. back. So I kind of like that. I might, I love that I might idea. use that as a, you know, just once again a tip. What are three songs, yeah, like yeah. in your planning meetings? Like what are the, out of these ones we've chose, what are going to be three that are going to be absolutely, right? Like I, I, I'll ask them what are like. Have to be on the dance floor. Yeah, what are must plays is how I phrase it. But I like that because if you phrase it in the way of like you and your, you and your significant other aren't going to be spending the entire time together. That's just the reality of it. But if we had a couple songs to lock in together, we could figure out like how to make those moments and really use the the full effect of those songs. Right. Yeah. So it was a good idea. I like that one a oh, lot. I like cool. her very excited tip. 
and that she's obsessed with. All right. Good tip. I like it. Okay, peeps. It's time. Oh, yeah. It is time to go back to the music. Taking it back. Great Scott. No, good. Good so stuff. I like that. I yeah. like that mashup. I dig it. It's very unexpected, so it's cool. Yeah, with uh, Riri coming off the Super Bowl, I feel like uh, we're going to be playing. I mean, we were, we've we been playing her, um, but mostly yeah. I think the go-to with her is, um, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, we Found Love? We Found Love, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go with, uh, what is it? Disturbia. That's what I was thinking. I haven't played that one in a minute. Maybe, yeah. yeah, no, we found love is that's like, kind of like it's, the go-to it's not really a deep cut, course. but there's songs that are like forgotten about totally, and then you play them yeah. and they're oh no, I think you no know, Miss lot. New Booty, that's one that's right? forgotten about, that's and a then forgotten you drop track. it and you're like oh, oh yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, and even Fat Bottom Girls, like you yeah, can throw that throw Definitely. that in to, to stuff and just you're not playing the whole track, you're just giving a little taste of it, and then people are singing it. It's anthem they, they playing the part they know, right? right? I don't know Fat Bottom Girls, the full no. lyric, but I know that part. Yep. You know what I mean? I know Fat Bottom Girls, but I don't know the full you song. You do? I'm That's aware of the song. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you know some Fat Bottom Girls? <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, that sounds a little, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. uh, okay. Well, um, I think that's about it. Yeah, those were all my tracks. Yeah, I think we can put a bow on this one. Uh, once again, thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate you all. And uh, I don't know. What do you think? Should we do it again next week? I think we should. We're working on getting a new guest on. So we'll right. hopefully next week, if not that, the following week. Um, but yeah, wedding season is here. So keep listening for all the crazy things we're talking about. And yeah, looking forward to the new ones. We'll see you next week. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for checking out the Cutmaster Cast podcast. Make sure you stay tuned with all things related at www.cutmastermusic.com.